Hi everyone, how you doing? It's Phoenix here, as you know. Um, yeah, a lot's been happening lately, to be honest, and I thought I'd make a little video as a recap um, for myself, just as much as for anyone else who might be interested as to uh, how I've been, what I've been up to, and it's something I can look back on, because, you know, I'm the kind of guy that I like to live in the moment and focus on the arrow of time moving forward. And I'm so immersed in the moment so that I don't miss um, what's happening in each moment and any opportunities that might arise spontaneously. Um, that, you know, I, I do have issues sometimes recalling the past. You know, a lot of people, they, they feed their ego, they reflect on the past heaps, they talk about stories of the past, you know, and they really build a strong sense of identity. And that that's, stuff's all good and well and, and, and important to um, to function with other people in certain ways in society, but I've never really been that kind of guy, you know, like, sure, I'll, I'll tell a story if it's anecdotal and I think somebody can learn from it through reflection, because that's always the, the best way, you know, you don't you don't tell someone this is how you fix your problem, you just, you know, relate to them with a the problem you've had that's similar and, and, and how you felt, you know, identify with them and then you'd be like, you know, this is how I got out of it, this is my solution that worked for me, and then you hope that through reflection they just figure out, oh, maybe I can... You know, maybe I'm inspired, maybe to to do the same, since it's a similar situation. So I do that, but I don't I don't really you know I forget shit. I forget shit about my past. So a bit of a, a diary, a bit of a, a, a vlog entry, I suppose. Um. So yeah, let's cut to it. So as you all know, I was swiftly evacuated from um from my family's place, my sister's. Um, for reasons not entirely of my own. It just went really sour, and you know, my sister's a bit of a toxic individual, and very quick to get hot. And it's impossible. I mean, once she's like that, she just closes doors, and there's no talking, there's no resolution, there's no peace, or anything left to salvage. And once she gets stuck in that hole of fire and anger and toxicity, um, like yeah, it's just impossible to change the outcome. And the outcome was that I had a week to pack my shit. So. As you come to know, you know, going for a year and a half back when I moved house, it took about 14 van loads to get all of my stuff um, into the the new place. And then the next time I moved, it took two van loads. And I've been staying at my sister's for the last six months, be be before the last fortnight. I was there for six months. Um, and I came to accumulate some extra stuff while I was there. But, you know, within a week and with fuck all money in my pocket, I didn't really have petrol to go around. To, I didn't have any way to really drop the stuff off, um, and there was a Verge collection, so I had to say goodbye to a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff, a lot of tools, a lot of functioning tools that people luckily came and picked up. Um, my 60-inch plasma screen I sold for 20 bucks to some guy that was looking through the Verge. So you know, it's, it was kind of good. It's, it's, it's a bit of a bit of a, an overdue, a long overdue spring clean, you know, because I'm just sick of carrying around so much shit, and a lot of it I just don't use. But um, about the same token, you know, if I had a bit more time, um, it would have been good to have the chance to be able to at least sell the stuff and, and make a bit of money. But you know, you win some, you lose some, and in that in that instance, I I lost quite a bit. Um, so you know, I stayed in my van at Hillary's for a couple of days, and I parked outside Macca's at Carousel for a couple of uh, four days. So for about a week, I was in my van, and you know, which is good means I had more time just to reflect and process everything and get my, my mind uh, set in order and figure out where to go next. Um, and then my good friend um, Zach has, has helped me out and uh, allowed me to set up shop with my van and to, to hang out with him in the house on occasion and use the amenities, whatever, that, however you say that fucking word, amenities, whatever, toilets and shit. And I don't know that I use toilets. It's not like, you know, I've got a fucking quantum fucking ass that needs to have multiple toilets for me to take one dump, you know. But you get the point. You get... Now I'm going too much emphasis on this. Too much, I'm going into it too much. But it's cool. Everything's good. I've been pretty good for the last two weeks now. Um, and my friend who's got the the internet, NBN, so it's been useful for me to sort out stuff. Um, and yeah, basically... I didn't really have much work. I've been doing my gardening business now for three years. No sense link or nothing. It's completely 
um, getting my income from that. And, you know, I lost a lot of clients. You know, I got involved in this relationship with this girl. And I'm the kind of guy I always put friends first um, before money, before business. I don't really have the shark mentality, you know, if, even in gardening, if I'm working and I have a 10 minute smoke break or like I'm doing now, just having a bit of a break when my muscles fucking get their vigor back, you know, I'm not going to charge for that shit. I'm not going to charge for smoking, for having lunch, for dawdling, for even the conversations I have with the client, which are essential for me to find out what to do on the job. I don't charge for it. Cause I'm, I don't have the shark mentality, you know, that dude, not dude, not, you're not going to hear that music playing when I'm around, you know? So, um, I always put friends first. So when I was in this relationship with this girl, she had some, some issues and she needed a lot of attention and, and help and just support. And, you know, I'll never say that she's the cause of my business failing and why I lost so much clients because ultimately we're responsible for the decisions that we make. You know, I'm no longer a child. I'm 30 years old. So I have to take full accountability whether I like it or not. But I've got no problem taking accountability for, for issues because I accept that I'm not perfect, that I do make mistakes, that I am ultimately a fool more than anything, just like most of us, and um, I'm not fixated to this idea that I have to defend that I am fucking pristine in my nature, you know, I'm, I'm very imperfect. So ultimately I chose to, instead of visiting my clients when I said I would, I kept postponing because I go to the doctors with this with this partner of mine and, and just be there with her, go shopping with her because she, she had anxiety and stuff. So ultimately, I lost a lot of clients, and you know, I procrastinate as well. So maybe a bit of it was that you know, days I didn't want to do gardening. I thought, well, you know, I'd rather help my friend, and it means I don't have to do gardening. And but it's not bad because I'm helping someone else, so I can justify it. You know, so ultimately, I lost a lot of clients, and it's been really tricky. Um, and that, you know, really, it all it it was tricky about a year before that when my my father and his wife, who helped me start the business, um, put the rug out from underneath me. Um, took away half of the tools, expected me to pay way more than what is legitimately fucking reasonable and plausible to pay. Um, you know, because they'd started the business in a year and my dad's back went out and he just wanted to get his money back. So he thought, you know, I'll get my son to pay me back 66% of what everything is worth originally, as opposed to if you actually sold it to a stranger, you'd be lucky to get it for 33, 40%, definitely under 50% for these tools that have been used for over a year of depreciation and shit, but I was getting, you know, I was expected to pay 66% of the original price, so that kind of fucks me up a bit, and having the car and the, and the trailer and half the tools taken off me, um, you know, I had, a, I had a, a courier and, you know, the trailer, yeah, it was all taken, so it was really tough, but I, I stuck it out, literally packed everything I could into my Hyundai XL um, that my father had given me beforehand. And I worked out of that for a bit, um, bought my own little trailer to attach to it, and then ended up hiring a Subaru Forester from some very decent and great people, uh, Samantha and Ben, clients of mine. Thank you for that. If you happen to be watching, helped me out a lot. And they let, they let me do that for a few months, and I just you know had to buy them a you know, couple of cartons a week or something. It was really really great, an, an amazing deal, and forever grateful. And through that, I was able to end up getting a van. Um, what kept kept working, saved up, paid off a van from another client, and uh, and then I was back, back into it, full swing. But um, but like I said, then the relationship happened, and I still lost a lot of my clients. So it's been tough, and you know it's been a pretty unfortunate run for the last couple of years. I've been moving from share house to share house, and it's just been just an unfortunate chain of events. Really, there's no other way to put it. There's, there's a lot of strange you know, creatures out there, a lot of just individuals who can't contain their own shit and they let it spill over and it ends up getting your toes wet, you know what I mean? If not engulfing you to the point where you have to evacuate swiftly. And that, that's just been happening time after time, friends, family, strangers, you know, it's it's fucked. You know, my, my rules when I'm living with people, two rules. This is all I have. First rule, don't make your business my business. Second rule, don't make your business my business. Yeah, it's like the little Fight Club spin I put on it. You know, if you, if you repeat it, it has more emphasis. But it's true. And, you know, maybe you can chuck a third rule that, you know, leave shit where you found it. But that kind of falls into don't make your business my business. If your business is making a sandwich for, for breakfast in the morning, don't leave a mess out because that's your business. Don't make it my business. Don't leave it out for me to clean, for me to get bothered by. 
clean after yourself. So really, I think you just need one rule when you live with people, but you emphasize it, so you say it twice. Don't make your fucking business my business, please. But people do that. People do that. They drag you in uh, to their problems, to their little world of insanity and whatnot. Um, and, you know, it doesn't matter how reasonable, how careful, how strategic, how delicate you approach these situations. You know, it doesn't matter what method you use. Sometimes there's just no way of negotiating with insanity or with people that refuse to listen, refuse to play ball uh, on, on anyone else's terms. You know, some people, just, a lot of people just aren't open to negotiating, compromising, listening. They just do it their way. And if that you don't do it their way, because they haven't really grown past a child fact, they're still a child psychologically, so they're like, oh, I want to do it my way, and oh, this is inconvenient, because now I have to compromise. Well, I'm just going to find a way to turn it all around and make you out to be a big poop head. And that's what they do. They make you look like a big poop head. They come up with some stupid story, com complete fabrication even, and then use that as a basis to justify their transgressions. And they're totally disrespectful and um, unwarranted and reckless and cruel sometimes, if not just neglectful behavior, you know? Justification, justification, justification. So, you know, it's been it's been a bad run, fucking people have been making their business my business, and I've just been trying to keep to myself, keep my business to myself, um, trying to get my business, you know, keep it running with the few clients that I had. So that's the update of where I was now, where, where, how, where how are things now? And where am I going from here? So... Um, I'm actually really fortunate and have been very lucky this week. I don't know if it's luck or fate or what have you, but I was doing a, a job for a client, um, just over there. And, uh, this is about last week and there was a verge collection and the neighbor across the road, just over here, noticed me and called me over and I was like, Hey, um, you know, what do you charge? Blah, blah, blah. I've got all this work that needs doing, and, you know, there's a verge collection, so if you can do it, we may as well do it soon so I can get on the verge. So I was like, fuck yeah, perfect timing. And um, and there's a lot of work here. There's like two days, I charge 40 an hour, so that's 350 a day, 340, 350. Um, so I think that it ends up being about two and a half, three days work here. So um, that's like over a 1, thousand, 1,050 bucks or something right there. So I'm like, fuck yeah, you know, what better time than when I'm living out of a fucking unregistered van. Um, even this car now is unregistered because literally it's just been so fucking terrible. I, I haven't been able to keep on top of that shit. So what better time to come into some money um, than now when I am when high and dry on the bones of my butt living out of my van half the time, you know? And it also means I can chug some money to Zach and some other people that I owe money to because, you know, I can be irresponsible and I, I've got motivation issues sometimes and I, I get buried under shit and like I said I can procrastinate and I miss jobs and I don't make the money I need to and I can be unreliable with that you know honesty total honesty um so but I don't forget and I don't forget those that haven't betrayed me I don't forget those that I owe and you know sometimes if you've betrayed me and I owe you you know I'll still pay back whatever I feel is deserved but if it's the way you've betrayed me and fucked me over is proportionate or worse than how much I owe, then I would just be like, well, fuck you. Fuck you, we're even. You know, but there are a lot of people that um that do deserve to be paid back, and I don't forget. And when I am able to, I do uh, what I need to, you know. So, so I've got this job, and it gets better. It gets better than that. And that's just the sun that's come up from this dark fucking endless night that I've been living in for the last couple of years. Um, the sun's come up, a bit of money to help just fucking... Get me going again. Um, but now there's a rainbow. It gets better. There's a fucking rainbow. And that is because the client that got me this job from across the road um, took me to another job, in which I did a quote for. It's a, a, a rental property he wants to rent out in Ashdale. Very nice place. And there's, there's heaps of work to be done there. Heaps of these conifers, conifers he wants to have cut down because... You know, I'm a conservative gardener. I don't like tree lopping and killing shit. I don't really like reducing shit more than what is necessary just to make it functional and aesthetically pleasing. But you got to listen to the preference of the client. And this guy is a, bit, a little bit less conservative than me. So he's just wanting to remove a lot of stuff, cut it down. These conifers, which are like full-blown, big, well-shaped. There's probably about 10 of them. He wants them um, reduced down by half. Um, so there's a bit of work there. 
because you know it's, it's easy enough trimming the conifer, but if you're cutting down that much, there's typically some large fucking base um, stems. What do you call it? Uh, for trunks that you have to and you have to cut so you can saw it or get a chainsaw or whatever, and you kept moving the ladder around and everything. So it's a bit of work, a bit of work. And there's some other stuff I need to do there as well. So even that job there is is another two days, um, potentially three. So that's another fifteen hundred you know, um, or so, and, you know, this isn't even taken into account, you know, I haven't figured out yet how I'm going to get rid of the stuff, and we've just, just discussed that we'll figure out that once the work is done, so if I end up doing that, then that's, for both jobs, that's like another seven, eight hundred dollars, so basically in the next week, a week and a half, um, I should be up about through, uh, two and a half, Oh, no, that's more like, well, all of that together is more like three, three and a half thousand dollars, which is fucking sick. Really happy with it. And, you know, I used to be really bad um, with my money, you know, an impulsive shopper, you know. I used to work as a, as a laborer doing texture coding from 15 to 21. And the amount of money I just blew, you know, because I was gothic back then, and I'm all about style. At least I was back then. Now I don't really give too many shits. I still take pride in my appearance, but, you know. Back then, you know, I'd be spending money on fucking contact lenses and dye for my hair and makeup. Well, I'd probably actually pinch the makeup, you know. Um, I don't steal, by the way, from everyone. I'm not a thief. Uh, my motto is steal from companies, not company. So not people, because that's personal, and that's not fair, really. You know, these companies, they're fucking huge conglomerate businesses. They get paid 20000 a year insurance, whether they get stolen from or not, to cover for theft. So in a way, we're kind of obligated to make sure that they're not going to pay that money for nothing. You know what I mean? So places like Target and that, I'll never steal from a deli or a server or a small private shop or a small little franchise. But if it's a big conglomerate, um, you know, at least back back then, like years ago, when I was a teen, 21, 22, every now and then, you know, I'd pinch a makeup stick worth 40 bucks. And I'm like, oh, what does, what does it actually cost to make this fucking makeup stick? 40 bucks, 70 bucks, whatever. And I'd pinch, pinch some makeup. So I didn't pay for the makeup, but I would spend my money back then on, on all kinds of crazy shit from 15 to 21 and spend it on fucking... Like I said, all fucking shit, clothes, um, spikes, fucking those finger rings with the claws. I look, ooh, I've got fucking steel claws, I'm gangster. Uh, all that shit. And I just waste my money. Really bad. I'm like, I think part of it is like, I don't really like money. And when I have it, I just want to get rid of it. You know what I mean? Um, but now I'm 30 and, you know, time does things to people and you learn, even if it's bit by bit at a time. Um, or if it takes a while, so you eventually just hits you in one big lump sum. And then you're like, damn, I need to do some shit to change this shit up. I gotta change my act. And that's what I'm doing now. Um, so with this money uh, that's coming in at the fucking perfect time, um, and it gets better because now this guy that's next door has asked me, um, you know, oh, do you work across the road? I'm like, yeah, I've been working there for three years. He's like, oh, yeah, cool. He's like, um, I gave him my number and he... He said he'll, he'll, you know, keep me in mind for, for when work needs to be done. So I'm thinking if I can actually get, because this is a really nice neighborhood um, in Winthrop, if I can get a lot of people, a lot of clients in this area, I might be set just here, you know, because best thing with gardening is like a subscription business. You know, people keep coming back. Well, you keep coming back because the weeds and the fucking regrowth and everything keeps coming back. So you need to keep coming back every month for six weeks or whatever to, to keep doing it. So... I think already now with the clients, if I get the second guy, with the clients that I've gained, it's enough to get to, to keep me going and to get me by and move forward a little bit. Um, and anything else that I, any other clients I happen to find in the meantime is just extra pushing power. So I'm really happy, to be honest. Um, very relieved. Um, you know, last night, you know, I was on online perusing, you know, Wish.com and Alibaba and Made in China. And then I read reviews about Alibaba and Made in China because I figured, well, I don't really know how this shit works, what's reliable and who's what's safe to deal with. And then I was like, a lot of people were like, don't deal with Made in China because China is the land of the fake and you never get what's fucking on the, on the pictures. You know, it's always something else, some cheap fucking knockoff. So I was like, all right. So I closed down all those tabs and just stuck with Alibaba and Wish. Um... And, you know, I put a whole bunch of stuff into the cart, but, like, I haven't even put my details in, so I know, like, you know, there's no risk of, of buying anything yet. But, you know, I'm just putting everything there that I'm interested in, and then I'll fucking eliminate it based on priority. Um, but it gave me some ideas. 
of, of, of what I want to do with the money because I don't want to be reckless and I don't want to keep making the same mistakes. So, and now I have an opportunity to do something um, good. And, you know, three and a half grand is not a lot of money, but it's not a small amount either. And you can you can do relatively big things with it. So I'm thinking um, I want to find um, another vehicle, maybe a larger van, something to live in, um, one that's actually registered, and I can, I can be more legit and, and live more comfortably. Cause I still want to do the mobile living thing, to be honest. Um, I've been looking at generators and um, and all of that, and I think I'd probably need about two grand in total, two and a half grand. Um, I'm looking into a solar power setup, so I don't have to worry about fuel and all of that, and what I'll need for that. So it's with I think with petrol it'll be two grand. With solar, I'm I'm estimating probably two and a half, three grand, and that will be enough for me to to stay in my van, have my TV, my PlayStation, a little fridge, um, lights, you know, enough. Enough to get by, a little, bit, a little sound system. Um, so that's what I'm thinking. I'm just going to, I probably won't be able to get the car and, and the generator. So I'll probably end up getting the car and then paying off my fines so that I don't have to worry about my license registration elapsing. If I miss a payment, I can just get that out of the way. Um, get a new vehicle. Um, I'm also looking at survival gadgets on Wish.com, like these little fucking... Uh, these little tools like to start fires and stuff, it's only two bucks. But um, ultimately very handy if you find yourself uh, stuck out in a ditch and um, with no one around and you need help. So I'm just basically, what the future looks like for me right this instant is um, total independence, roaming on, on the road, living on wheels, being free, going where I please, legally, um, comfortably, and sustainably, just living off the sun's energy, um, so far my diet's been pretty meager, it's just been, you know, beans and tuna, um, and pies, where I put, like, some cheese and egg in it, you know, yummy cheesy eggy pies, and, 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 and um, but, you know, lots of beans, lots of cans of beans, every time I get a good pay, I stock up in, like, 15 cans, and a bit of spaghetti, and, you know, mix it with tuna sometimes, or, you know, whatever, and, um, yeah, so that's not a whole lot of money gone on that, I'm being really conservative, um, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to all of that, to be honest. I'm looking forward to being free. And not free, like, no one's ever really truly free because I am imprisoned inside this flesh, inside, inside this place some might call hell. Um, and, you know, you can't really escape it um, too easily, if at all. Um, but I have faith that you can, eventually. But, you know, I can have freedom at least from all the other fucking players in the game. From all the other fucking people's bullshit. I can be free of it. People people can fucking spill out their business onto other people as much as they want. That still sucks for those people, but you know what? I'm not going to be part of those people. No one's spilling their shit onto me anymore. No one's fucking with me anymore because they can't handle their own fucking shit. Alright? Because I'm, I'm a nice guy. You know, I'm a bit of a bitch cunt. That's my gaming alias. Bitch cunt. Bitch cunt supreme. Badass bitch cunt. Um, bit of a bitch because, you know, I can be emotional because I care and, and I'm an intense person, passionate. I like to assign meaning to things. I like to know that my relationships are based on respect and honor and all of that honesty. And, you know, when people aren't honest with me and they abuse my trust and they just, you know, exploit me or fuck me over, take me for granted, overlook me, neglect me, use me, you know, I just, I can be a bit of a bitch about it. I can be a bit sad. I can have the, I can get real hurt in the feels, um, and then I can be a total cunt as well when I need to be a cunt. And, I'm not, and that doesn't mean to say that when someone hurts me, my I, I turn into a bitch. I get emotional about, it, and then I turn into a cunt every time. Inevitably, and it's not the case. But if people fuck me over, you know, I'm all about mutual respect. And people gotta. I tell people this as warning. It's actually warning, um, as much as it is a guarantee. Yes, it's a guarantee that if you keep respecting me and treating me with honor and dignity, then I will do the same to you, and I'll never betray you, ever. But, if you fuck me over, and you disrespect me and treat me with no dignity, just like some fucking puppet in your show that you can stamp on, well, that means I can play by the same rules. I can do the same to you. It seems fair enough to me. And some might say, oh, well, that's eye for an eye, 